You know how AAA games these days are so demanding that you cannot even get high FPS enough? It feels frustrating definitely. Just like this. Relax, there's a way for you to increase the FPS so that you feel comfy enough to play any games. This tool is called Lossless Scaling. I will only say this once. This tool is a magic and has tons of features that you can customize to your liking per game profile. To summarize what this program is, Lossless Scaling is originally an upscaling technology and recently added frame generation support in literally almost every game including emulator. Yeah, you heard me folks in emulator as well, where not even DLSS and FSR frame gen is implemented yet. It is created by THS developer. We will dive further about question and answers later if you have any questions. I almost forgot, this program isn't free. It costs 7 bucks, but it is definitely worth it. When you have purchased lossless scaling, simply click install and then launch the program. This interface is very user friendly, so you won't have an issue with navigating. First. You want to set up the setting and set your desired hotkey, so you can simply press the hotkey if you want to upscale in-game. Next, we are going to explore scaling mode. Ignore the game profile for now, we'll get to that. Scaling mode is used when the game is in window mode and you want to make it fit to full screen, as if it's borderless. Some games do not support borderless, so this feature is technically neat. Auto is used when you are already used borderless full screen option, so you don't need to tinker that. However, if it is in window mode, you may set it to custom and select your scale factor. Scale factor 1 is already good and select resize before scaling. It is important as this will force your window resolution game to fit into whatever desktop resolution is. Huh, neat. If the technical explanation may seem confusing and hard to understand, you can see what I did in World War Z game. I will set it to window mode 720p, which is pretty low and hard to see. This is what happened if I put scaling mode to auto. And this is what happened if I put scaling mode into custom and select one scale factor as well as resizing. Of course, I will also show what happened if I put more than one scale factor and disable the resizing. Next, let us dive in the scaling type. I am fairly sure you must have heard about DLSS scaling and FSR scaling. Lossless has its own scaling. Not only that, it also integrates FSR and NIST upscaling, which were both from AMD and NVIDIA despite not the latest version. According to the manual, when it comes to 2D games pixel type, it is best to use integer or nearest neighbor scaling type. Otherwise, use AMD FSR or NIST for 3D modern game. Despite this, each game has different results, so it is best if you pick on your own. If you wish to know what kind of image will produce when selecting scaling type, fear not. We will get into questions and answers later. Do not forget to select the sharpness you desire, but don't make it too sharp. Finally, we are heading to frame generation, the most desired feature we are waiting for. LSFG has two versions, 2.3 and 1.1. The difference of those versions are the newest has the latest enhanced architecture that reduce ghosting, artifact, edge distortion, blurring. While it focuses on better quality, it does use more GPU resources. one1 is more or less the backbone, but consume less GPU. Now this is the time when I have to say latest is not always better. You need to know that people have different machines, not all of them are the same with us. What works for us in the latest version might not work for them, especially when they use weaker GPU. In another case, some games might introduce more artifact in 2.3 instead of 1.1. So what I'm trying to say is you have to experiment for each game use case. Do not just decide that 2.3 is absolutely the best. It has provided another option for a reason. And then we get to what mode you want to frame generate. Times 2, times 3 or the latest update times 4. It's pretty self-explanatory. You want to increase from 60 FPS to 120 FPS? Use times 2. You want to increase from 60 to 180? Use times 3. You want to quadruple the frame? Use times 4. Sure, it might sound great and marvelous to the point you can play the game well, there must be a catch, right? Keep in mind that just because you can frame gen up to times 4 doesn't mean it won't take toll on your GPU. Remember, it also has something to do with your monitor and GPU resources. You don't want to have your FPS reduced a lot instead of increasing. Now, if your monitor refresh rate is spotted only up to 220Hz, then it is extremely useless to use times 3 or times 4. 
because you won't feel much fluidity anything beyond 120 fps. If anything, it's just a waste of power electricity and produces more heat. Watch out for your incoming bill. You also see that performance button. What does it do? The answer is that if your GPU is too weak to produce frame gen, this option is there to help reducing the GPU resources so you don't get less FPS before frame generating. It will produce less good quality but do not feel threatened from this. The comparison when using performance versus not is almost hard to be seen with naked eye. Then we have more options below the frame gen. Cursor, rendering, capture, GPU display, crop input, behavior, and legacy. These are all based on my options but feel free to explore beyond this. I personally only use clip cursor because I don't like if the cursor is leaving the game window. In the rendering options, we have sync mode and max frame latency options. These are important as they are related to tearing and input latency. We all know that V-Sync in many games options have an impact to input latency. But on the other side, disabling V-Sync also causes screen tearing. Both are essentially annoying and cause impact on gaming performance. Lossless has provided options of default and V-Sync. The best option is to put on default as it doesn't interfere much with input latency. What about screen tearing? The way to solve this is to frame limit so it doesn't go above your monitor's refresh rate. That way, you don't need to enable VSync. For the max frame latency, you would want to pick only one or two. If you put one, that means the frame generated will not go above the monitor's refresh rate. If you put two, it will go above it. But what does it benefit? To explain this, you need to understand about frame pacing. You must have seen that some games can be stuttering and not smooth even if you have high FPS. That is because the frame pacing is not stable as the FPS generated isn't exactly double nor triple or divisible perfectly. For example, you cap your game to 60 FPS, you have 144Hz monitor, and you use x3 mode as you put max frame latency to 1, your FPS game will be generated from 60 to 444 FPS. It should have been 180, but the rest is being discarded. However, the impact is pretty noticeable as it doesn't actually cause smoothness due to some frames being discarded. To solve this, you need to set it to 2 so that the FPS is perfectly triple. This is the exact use case of how it benefits. Yes, I understand you won't feel like it's 180 FPS due to the maximum support of 144Hz, but the smoothness and frame pacing are what matters the most. Then we will go to another one which is draw FPS. This option is useful when you want to check what FPS are after being generated in game. You can also use this to see if lossless is frame generating in game. Not showing usually means it is not frame generating. The next one is capture API. It has three options, DSGI, WGC, or GSDI. The most important are DSGI or WGC. To explain this, if you want to cap the FPS in game anything other than half of your refresh rate monitor, it is best to use this. For example, I kept Forward Z game to 48 FPS and then I use DSGI and Times 3 mode to bring me up to 144 FPS. In simple terms, it is flexible and you can set or cap any FPS you want. WGC is the opposite. You have to cap exactly half of the monitor's refresh rate. You cannot cap at any FPS as it will cause frame inconsistency and lagging in game. Another disadvantage is that if your game is not enough to produce at least half FPS of your monitor's refresh rate, then this option might not be good even after being frame generated. As I never use GDI, it is not entirely needed to choose. Only pick DSGI as it is the most flexible and easiest to custom. The last three are not needed to fiddle and it's best to leave at default if you are on PC. Unless you have multiple monitor, do not forget to take multi-display mode, otherwise leave it empty. If you are using laptop and have two GPUs which are integrated GPU and dedicated GPU, make sure to select the dedicated GPU. Finally, what if I want to set and save the profile for each game? Not to worry, click add and then name whatever profile you wish. Filters is the game executable location. Locate the executable and that's it. Leave the auto scale off if you don't want it activated automatically and manually activate it. Beware though. You need to highlight and select the profile before scaling as I tested myself and the game was using the wrong profile until I highlight the profile first. That is all lossless scaling's feature folks. But wait! There's more! Yeah, It's rewind time! We still have questions and answers for those who are still in dub. Let's go to it. What is the minimum FPS to use lossless scaling without too much ghosting artifact? It is best to use lossless scaling at minimum 30 FPS 
on 1080p or 60fps beyond 1080p. Keep it in mind that the less base FPS you have, the more latency input and ghosting will show. Then here comes another extra question. Why do we have to use lossless scaling when we already managed to achieve 60 FPS? I mean, isn't that not needed? You were wrong! You were wrong! As I mentioned earlier, there are people who use high refresh rate monitor, and many AAA games these days are demanding to the point it's hard alone to get 80 FPS on 1080p Ultra. This program is there to help increasing your smooth gameplay. Can this be used in emulator like PCSS2, RPCS3? Absolutely. Look at me using RPCS3, God of War 3, since the game is extremely demanding. As you can see, I totally use lossless scaling to frame generate this game and it feels extremely smooth. Is it true that LS used a lot of GPU resources and it is even more when using x3 and x4? Correct. Depending on the game resolution you are using, you can use as much as 30% GPU resources and even more when using x3 and x4. Then here comes another extra question. What about it? To explain this, game uses GPU resources. And when the game utilizes, for example, 99% of GPU resources, it means there is no more room for LS to frame generating. Due to this, what will happen is that the base FPS will reduce quite a noticeable amount and then being frame generated. We don't want base FPS to be reduced as it impacts ghosting and input latency. This is why it is best to give some headroom for LS to use resources. Capping FPS is one way to reduce the resources as it doesn't generate unlimited FPS. However, do not forget that performance mode option in LS can reduce the resources up to 15%. So feel free to use that option to give a little bit of breather for your GPU. What causes the game to use too much GPU resources? A. High resolutions. 2. Ultra settings. So don't just crank up everything if your GPU cannot handle it. Use DLSS too because it helps reduce your GPU resources. How do I frame limit and what kind of frame limit should I use? Okay, so we know that there are three ways to frame limit. Do it in game, via Riva Tuner Statistics, or Nvidia Control Panel. The simplest way is to do it in game, but often time it doesn't provide flexible frame cap like 444 FPS. RTTS is the most flexible and the most recommended to use because it has Nvidia Reflex Injection, which is designed to lower latency input. You can also use Nvidia Control Panel as well, but it's more effective to use RTTS. All you need to do is to add the game profile by finding the executable and then capping the game in here. There's more. Select Setup and scroll below. Select the frame rate limiter to Nvidia Reflex and then inject Nvidia Reflex Slip Call to After Frame Presentation. You need to do this for each game. And that's it. You now cap the FPS in game as well as gaining reflex as well. Double win. Here's another extra question. Will they conflict each other? Technically, yes. But to how much extent? I am not entirely sure because I haven't had time to test it. How do we measure input latency? The answer is via RTTS. Thanks to reload underscore FZR, he made a script hotkey to allow monitoring input latency easily without adding hook process of LS in RTTS every time you restart lossless. The files are provided in the video description. You can go to RTTS, select the game, and edit. Go to Overlay Editor and then load the OVL file. Save and then run the hotkey file. Run the game and then activate the frame generate lossless and statistics. It will now show input latency. Can you use monitor 60Hz only? Yes, but then you have no reason to use lossless. You won't get much fluidity above 60 FPS, even the FPS shows 120. This is why at least 120 Hz monitor is needed. The more, the better. Are G Sync and FreeSync monitor compatible with lossless? Absolutely. Lossless now supports both G Sync and FreeSync. As I do not have G Sync and FreeSync monitor, I am entirely not sure how to apply that. Can you show us the image of different upscalers? You read my mind. I will put the website in the video description. Go to this website and select the upscaler. Not all options are shown as some upscalers are best used in anime or movie. Can you record frame generated game with OBS? Definitely. It is a little bit tricky to do that but not so tedious.
To do this, you need to open lossless and then not minimize it. And then when you are in game, simply scale the game. Alt tap to check whether or not the image shows in OBS. If it shows lossless UI instead, redo this again until it shows the game screen. Can lossless be used to watch movie or in YouTube? Can! Of course can! That's why lossless is powerful magic tool. You don't even need interpolation software if you want to watch anime in 60fps. Less time, more efficient. Will it have access to game engine so that it can be the same as DLSS? No way. Lossless doesn't have access data to game engine. Therefore, its quality will always be lower than DLSS. In any case, we have dual GPU to use lossless. Can we use integrated GPU for lossless and dedicated GPU for the game so that lossless doesn't take dedicated GPU resources? According to the lossless scaling community, you definitely can use dual GPU. As I do not have dual GPU, I didn't dive this further, so you might need to join Discord to get some more information. And that's all folks. These are all explanations about lossless scaling. What do you think about it? Is it worth to spend $7 for this tool? Let me know your thoughts. Hopefully, you can now play AAA games without worry. Cheers!